Welcome back. Video two in our three-part series on burnout. In video one, I talked about the two different types of stress. Physical stress, the stress that our muscles experience, and mental stress, which could be what comes from within, the pressure we feel to learn new skills fast, or maybe the pressure that we're feeling to hit a zero deduction routine or the mental stress outside of ourselves, which would be our perceived expectation from our coaches, or our parents, or maybe even our teammates. And that's right, the combination of those two types of stress can lead to burnout. Do you remember the three stages of burnout? Staleness, overtraining, which can lead to stage three, burnout. Staleness is when our motivation is stagnant, meaning it's not improving. We're kind of just there. We're not feeling the love we once did. And our skills are plateauing, which means they're kind of leveling off. We're not seeing the improvement that we feel we should based on our work ethic. Overtraining is when we're working really hard, but our skills are not getting any better and our motivation is actually dropping. We're feeling like cheerleading isn't fun. It's just too much work. We're not able to see through the fact that we're not getting better and we're getting frustrated, which leads us then into stage three, which is full on burnout. Not only is our motivation dropping, our skills are getting worse despite working hard. Now in this video, I wanna cover some common misconceptions on burnout as well as giving you one of the most important strategies in overcoming burnout, which is knowing your motivation. Before we start, it's really important that you all understand that to plateau, which means to no longer get better, but kind of feel stuck, is normal and common as an elite athlete. In fact, I can't name one elite athlete that I've worked with that hasn't hit a period of plateau. Now, how did these elite athletes overcome it? Well, actually, I can separate this into two categories. One athlete or type of athlete that I've worked with has seen the plateau as a temporary problem. In fact, they kind of just go back to the drawing board, they stay calm, and they think of new strategies to overcome what's keeping them from getting better. The second athlete or the second type of athlete that I've worked with has really just dug in to the frustration of plateauing. They feel like it's a sign that they're no longer good and they have this crisis of identity that maybe they're just not a good cheerleader and they should just give up. If you've been following my videos, what I'm describing is quite simply mindset. If you are not familiar with mindset, go check out one of my videos where I talk about growth mindset and fixed mindset and how the growth mindset can help elevate you to becoming the best athlete possible. All right, let's time back in to talking about burnout and use two different types of athletes as our examples. Now, Paula is an athlete who works really hard. She's on a level two team. She's in the gym multiple times a week at practice. She takes a private lesson and a tumbling class. Now she's been on this junior two team for two years. So it's common and it would make sense that she has a goal to make her level three team next, next year. But she is so frustrated. She's been working on this tuck for what seems like over a year and she just doesn't feel like she's getting any better. This makes sense that she be frustrated. And she has a valid concern that she just doesn't know what to do. Whereas Hayden is on two teams. Hayden's on a junior two team and a senior three team. She takes private lessons, tumbling class, and she's also trying to become a more flexible flyer for her team. So she's taking flexibility privates. Just recently, she's been complaining that cheerling is just not as fun as it once was. 
In fact, she's also talked about how her lower back is hurting and how her ankles are experiencing quite a bit of pain when she's tumbling. She also has noticed that her stunts aren't getting better. She feels like her tumbling isn't improving, and so she's frustrated. So both of these athletes, Paula and Hayden, have valid concerns. They're both frustrated, rightfully so. But these two athletes differ in that Paula is just experiencing a regular setback. She may be plateauing in her skills, but my suggestion to help her overcome this would be to focus on her technique of her lower level skills. That's right. If you've been working on a skill for a year and you don't feel like you're improving, the problem is that you're not a bad athlete. The problem is that you're not focusing on your lower level skills. <laughs> I get it if you're someone who's like Paula and you're like, wait, I'm trying to get my back tuck and you're telling me to work on my power hurdle or my round off or my back handspring, and your response is, I'm crazy, I get it, but I'm not. Rather than doing the same thing over and over again, tumbling classes, private lessons, work on my tuck for a year, and expecting a different result, which is the definition of insanity, try focusing on your lower level skills. I might also suggest start working on the flexibility that you might be lacking in areas of your body that are causing your tuck to be harder. Or it could be a strength deficiency. Focus on maybe your hamstring or your glute strength. In fact, I think I know of a really good site that you could visit to help with those weaknesses. Ah, Cheer District. You might be familiar with it. Now, Hayden is different. Hayden is experiencing what we would call one of the stages of burnout, most likely people would say she's in overtraining. And so one of the strategies I would suggest for her is to take a timeout. I'm not suggesting she quit her team. I'm not saying timeout and don't come to practice, but maybe pull back from some of her private lessons. Maybe start taking care of her body more after practice. Though I love and appreciate the fact that she's committing so much time to get better, this may be contributing to her skills declining and the pain and lack of motivation she's feeling. Now, talking back earlier, I mentioned one of the most important strategies, know your motivation. I would explain and talk to Hayden about why she loves cheerleading. What got you started? When you think of cheerleading and when you first started, Think of where you were and all the hard work that you've put in to get you to where you are now. Taking a step back and instead of thinking day by day improvement, look at yourself based on month or months. Have you improved? Chances are you have. When you're thinking about whether or not you've improved, I want you also to focus on what your effort has been. You've been in the gym five days a week doing strength and conditioning, flexibility training, private lessons, working for your team, helping your gym. Like, you're amazing. I want you to feel pride in all that commitment and know that it's okay to maybe need to refresh your brain and become repassioned by cheerleading. Remembering where you come from and remembering where you want to get to is one of the best strategies to help you with burnout. Elongate your game plan. Maybe you're 13 trying to be on a world's team and you're feeling the pressure to get better has been burning you out. Take a step back, slow down. You have plenty of time to reach that goal. In video three, I'm going to talk to you more about other things you can do to help you withstand the pitfalls of burnout. Until next time, be well.